All Blacks. This man's name springs instantly to my mind, and that is because I'm of the generation, of course, when Murray Maxted first wore that jersey, he never took it off until he retired. Something like 77, 78 consecutive games for the All Blacks. Uh, one of our best rugby brains, and what I love more than anything, he is an independent analyst of everything to do with New Zealand rugby. Stopping on the side of the road for us, we absolutely appreciate that, Mix. Welcome back. Thank you, Martin. Well, what an introduction, eh? It's very flattering. Well, it's well-deserved because you're a man that I always love talking to because you've got an independent brain and thought when it comes around to all of this, and that's why I'm happy to sit here and let you talk away with what you've heard about Ian Foster, what you've heard from him, and what you think about this whole situation. Quite contrary from the early days, I think they called me outspoken, I think it was. Was it? I think that's a compliment, Mex, is what I, I always take that. <laughs> Pretty conservative society then, though, I will say. And well, not so today. What have you heard then? What, what, is your, what is your gut feeling from what you've learned today? Well, I, I don't blame Ian Foster making that comment, to be frank. Um, I was lucky enough to have six All Black coaches. So it was a, a, a volatile time, I think, really. Um, but they did have a habit of um, giving a manager a coach, coaching role in those days. Um, but one thing I did learn is that if you're a player on the team and you don't make the starting lineup, then you're thinking, well, he's not going to be there in a year's time. And so your sort of an allegiance changes, the whole culture of the team changes. And it's not intentional. There's no one there saying, well, if I didn't get picked on the starting lineup, I'm going to sabotage this team. Now, that, that, that doesn't happen inside an all-black environment, really. Not one that I've experienced anyway. I mean, you know, one of the great things about all-black rugby is its history and its record. Um, you know, 80% success ratio over 100 years is pretty damn good. And a lot of those um, games, uh, I'm sure that our team wasn't as good as uh, the teams we were playing, but we managed to uh, somehow etch out a victory. And uh, I put it down to the team factor, the morale, the spirit, the culture, the history. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors going on there. And we realise when you travel overseas, you realise how small New Zealand is as a country and how insignificant it is. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this unbelievable reputation as an all-black or an all-black team and and it's revered around the rugby world, and it's quite something. So it makes you quite proud and patriotic as a Kiwi. Um, so you want to do damn well, and you want to make sure that no one puts one over you, and, and you do the best you possibly can, but you've got to do it together. Now, rugby is, a, is the ultimate team sport, and if you're not batting in the same team, it's bloody hard. And if a guy doesn't get a start... Um, you could often think, well, there's a new coach coming along board anyway, so, you know, I don't really care about this mob, I'll worry about it next year. Now, we won't win the World Cup with that attitude. So if the New Zealand Rugby Union name a replacement for Ian Foster leading into the Rugby World Cup, I would say you can kiss goodbye to the Rugby World Cup. So they have to make a decision. Is this Rugby World Cup important? And in my view, it's very important. Um, because we have been a little bit inconsistent over the last um, three or four years since the since the last World Cup, actually, since just before the last World yeah, Cup. Yeah, before it. Yep. So you know, we need to win this one um, to, and to get back on the on the horse, so to speak, and you know the morale, raise the morale, etc. And we're not going to do it if there are people on the team that don't make the starting lineup that are thinking about the next All Black coach, not the one at the moment. Because that, you know, erodes the value of the team. The whole team dynamic changes. And it's not intentional. I will repeat that. Max, when, when you talk about the team as well, do you include the administration? Do you include the public? I mean, what New Zealand rugby call the stakeholders uh, are, the, are the provincial unions. Do we all have to be on the same page? How much does that affect in this professional environment, this coach? And that's what he's trying to talk about, this coach, these players. Yeah, that's a very interesting question, that one, and there are a number of uh, um, answers, but um, in, in my view, um, the magic of the all-black brand is the loyalty, the commitment of the whole mob. And the whole mob is the team, is the coaches, is the head coach, 
there's the manager and there's the supporters, everyone. You know, that's the whole mob. So I reckon that's pretty fundamental. And it is something that I have learned because I think, Martin, as a youngster, I was a bit of a um, uh, an independent character. I had my own mind um, and, I, I, and I was brought up um, being allowed to speak my mind. And it's probably, I was probably a bit outspoken at times and I do regret that. Uh, but as you get older, you sort of, you mellow out you a little do mellow bit. Out. And you, yeah. and, and you still have your mind, you know. And uh, I just think it's such an integral part of um, the success story of the All Black brand uh, is the support package, you know, of everybody, all and sundry, the whole caboodle, even those people who are from other countries that are playing you, who are, who are your adversaries. You know, you talk to South African people about the All Black brand, wow. Uh, you know, knock yourself out. Uh -huh. You talk about you talk you talk to the French about the All Black Brown. Wow, I mean, I went to France to play rugby before I was an All Black, and they kept on calling me an All Black um, on the when I was playing for Argentina on the field. Now I was embarrassed as hell because I wasn't an All Black, and I continually went along to the local newspaper and, and radio guys and said, "Listen, don't keep calling me an All Black. It's embarrassing." And they said, yes, but you're an All Black and we respect All Black rugby and every New Zealand rugby player is an All Black. Well, I mean, that sort of um, reputation, it doesn't come easy. You know, you've got to earn it, especially in the, in the, you know, in the cynical world that we live in today. Um, and so it's, it's something we must cherish. And if, if, if our board is naive, and I will use the word naive, I won't, I'm not going to use the word stupid. I would have used the word stupid 10 years ago. I'll use naive. If they're naive enough to think they can name an all-black replacement for Ian Foster prior to the Rugby World Cup, then they are naive. When Sam Kane came out last week and he was asked this question, and you could see the frustration in his face as well, and, you know, I do feel for Scott Robertson and Jamie Joseph, everyone else whose names are in this equation, because... It's the job of people like me on my side of the microphone to keep asking these questions. And it is frustrating for all of those who feel like they have to answer them. But you could see the frustration in, in Sam Kane as well, saying, look, we just don't want these distractions. As players, we've just got to focus on absolutely this. He was saying what you've actually said. And it does really concern me as a fan, thinking that, you know, look, I want this thing to be put to bed. I just I just want whatever to happen. They've endorsed Ian in the job, for God's sake. I mean, whether you like it or, 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 or don't like him as the coach, when last year they had that press conference and said he is the coach, I thought we were over all of all of this. So what is it that you want from, from here? What would be the ideal outcome for you from here? The board meet on Thursday. Well, uh, let me say right from the start, though, that I'm supportive of whoever is named as, as the all-black coach. Because you, I know that you've got to get behind them if you want to uh, retain this um, this unbelievable reputation that the brand has. Um, so, you know, Scott Robertson is a friend of mine. I like him. He's been very successful. He's, a, he's obviously a good coach. He's, he can bring people together and create a happy environment. Uh, Ian Foster has been in the role for a long, long time uh, as the uh, heir apparent and he's now got his chance. And whenever you change the all-black coach, you change the team dynamic a certain amount and a few players as well. And then the thing settles back down and off you go again. That's sort of historically what has happened. Now, there's some good signs, but there's also a little bit of inconsistency uh, with the team that's play that, yeah, and the results as well. So the team, the results have been inconsistent, but they're looking better. And so I'm 100% supportive of uh, Ian Foster and his squad going forward into this Rugby World Cup. And I'm going to be sitting in the grandstand to watch that first game against France. Sell out, mate. How'd you get out. a ticket to that? Bloody hell, good on you. Yeah. Well, I applied like everyone else. Oh, actually. come on, Mex. It's who you know, mate. You throw that name of yours around in France and somebody's got two tickets for you. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't know. I got the thing through... Um, uh, through Peter Barlow, who runs a travel company, um, okay. and you see, and you, you buy a ticket to the to fly over there, and you you've got uh, preferential purchasing power. That's all. That's all. Okay. It's as simple as that, you know. Um, but anyway, um, getting back to your your question, what was it? Well, my question <laughs> is, what's the what's the ultimate outcome for you here? Because you know, to me, the well, worst thing is, yeah, that, and you just yeah. have you just Mix, When it comes to the to the New Zealand Rugby Board. 
And I look at those faces and I'm completely uninspired by it. I understand the equality, inclusivity, diversity arguments. Don't get me wrong on that. But having 40% women on the board, and I said this at the time last year when this came up, I'm not sure whether this is the right thing for this particular company for New Zealand rugby. You know, surely the best brains running the joint at the moment is more important than trying to actually put tick every single demograph and every single psychograph and every single sexual sexuality box. You know, why is there not at least one man on that board who has worn that black jersey who understands what this is about? Because without the All Blacks winning, New Zealand rugby has no financial foundation there. I don't understand that aspect of it for a start. Yeah, well, I mean, it's hard for me to understand that too because I do realise how important it is uh, to to know actually how to win and what it takes to win and what sort of level of support you need to win. And the consistency of selection is one of those things that we haven't spoken about. And that's one thing that I think Ian Foster um, has to do. He has to be more consistent with his selections now that he's had a look at everybody. I'd like to see him develop combinations because combinations win matches there are is no doubt it's not uh, x factor players they win matches now and again but combinations win matches game after game so you know the new zealand rugby union and the new zealand rugby board have got a lot going on in the background we don't we're not privy to all of it so you know i can't answer that question probably all i can say is that i do sense though there is a bit of naivety um there i, I do sense that because for example, all the news says they're going to name the All Black coach before the Rugby World Cup. And if they do, once again, it just points to this significant thing is the board is naive. How disruptive, just go back and just and before we finish, just let people know, so this Murray McStead with us, how disruptive is it or potentially is it, not just for Foster, for everyone involved with him and for the players going ahead to this World Cup of not knowing. I'm just trying to think about it in any other business sense, in any other occupation. Uh, if you've got uh, a management team behind you that you don't really trust, that you don't really feel have your back, the anxiety that that causes, uh, I, I know that every human being would feel the same way about that. Uh, and also, if you don't know what your own future is, yet you've been asked and tasked to do something monumental, I don't know how unsettling that would be. I know how unsettling in my job, in my industry it is, and it is damn unsettling. It keeps you awake at night. So, again, how important to you that this thing gets sorted once and for all? Well, I don't think I could be more succinct than I was a few minutes ago when I said, if we announce a new coach to start after the World Cup, we won't win this Rugby World Cup in France. It's as simple as that. We won't win it. Because if you want to win that Cup, you've got to have everybody batting for the same team. You've got to have everyone on the same side. And you, everyone's got to want it. You know, everyone. And you name a coach, and not everyone's going to want it. There'll be, there'll be petty-minded people that'll say, you know, blah, 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 whatever they say. And there'll be, unfortunately, there'll be... Um, a change of environment in the in the team too, the All Black team, which is you know which is suicide. So it'll be suicide. Suicide to name the new coach All right. now. Okay. All right, I get that. Can I ask you one there final you question? Then? Then. One final question. And you and me have argued about this, and we argued about this in the radio sport days. And I remember uh, talking to you actually, and I think it was off air. And after the conversation, I went back into the office and I said, you know what? He's bloody convinced me. I said, who? I said, Max, he's bloody, he's bloody convinced me. Yeah. Yes, about the All Black jersey and about letting players go overseas and letting them play uh, as an All Black if they're not based in New Zealand. And I said, and you you convinced me, hell no, that jersey is the only thing New Zealand rugby have got and you've got to keep it here. Well, Bowden Barrett now says that picking overseas stars playing out of J Japanese clubs could benefit the All Blacks. I don't believe that that's... Uh, I, I just think that's absolute rubbish because of the standard of that rugby. And I want to know whether you've changed your mind on this issue and whether you agree with him or not. No, I don't think he said that exactly. I heard what he said too, Martin. I mean, sometimes we hear what we want to hear Maybe. when people are interviewed. He, was, he, he said it could. <laughs> He didn't say it will. Okay, he well, said right. it could. I might have just over. I might have. I, I might have foot faulted on that one, Mix. I might have foot faulted. Okay. Yeah, right. and I, you know, I mean, Bowden Barrett is is no fool, and he, he picks his word and he, he speaks very carefully. Um, and because he he is one of a, that squad, one of that squad that is so vital that they're all on the same side and that they're all you know punching together, and uh, he understands that. He understands that intimately, so he knows. He's just um, answering questions and trying to do it in a, 
in a diplomatic manner, um, you know, and try and... I think it's a bit different for someone like me. I'm not on the team anymore. I'm sort of passe and I'm passing objective, my objective perspective, simply, you know. So, you know, what I've said today on this interview, um, I don't... Uh, I, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to speak to someone who disagrees with what I've said. And uh, maybe I can convince them like I convinced you, Marty. Appreciate the fact you pulled over on the side of the road for us. Always a pleasure, mate. And we look forward to catching up right throughout the Super Rugby season when we're actually talking about what happens on the field as opposed to what's going on off it. That is Murray Mext at All Black Legend with us on the platform 234 time.